Hey guys, this is Blee, and now we're going to start talking about RPG Maker itself. So when you open the program, it looks kind of intimidating, just because you're like, what is this gray blob of stuff? But anyway, um, you would want to make a new project. Directory name is just the name of your folder, and game name is the actual name of the game, and you don't have to worry about that. And it'll place it in your RPG 2003 folder, which is in C. You can move it somewhere else as long as it's in this folder. I would keep it, I would keep it all together in one folder. Um, but anyway, let's just open one of my own projects. And okay, now it's time to talk about like the basic layout of um, RPG Maker. First of all, so that's what Project does. Don't worry about create a game disc. Um, I think there's a way to do it, but most people just ignore it. Most people who make these fan games and everything, they just send out the actual game files and you play it from there. So anyway, map, save map, obviously that's what save map, and um, revert to last save editing mode. This is just manually changes it. You don't really have to, I don't ever use <laughs> this to change my layers, I just use these buttons right here. Um, map zoom, obviously, just use these buttons right here. Tools database is important. Resource manager, this is what you use to import graphics and other things into your game and everything, but you don't really have to worry about it. As long as you have your chipsets and things in the folders when you send it out, you don't have to worry about it. Next is test play, that's just playing it. You can press this to test it. Full screen mode and show title, you just toggle whether or not the maker will show these things. Usually I keep these off just because it's easier to get to what I need to do. Help. Um, I forget, hold on. Yeah, okay, so for me, I can't get any help from this. Um, I don't know why. I used to be able to. That's odd. Anyway, um, help did explain a lot of things for me, but I should be, I hope <laughs> I'll be able to explain these things for you. Okay, this is make a, this is close the project. Sorry, I don't ever use this. Game disk, this is save, this is revert. Um, layer one layer two, and layer three. Those are all very different and very important, and a lot of when you're making your game has to do with manipulating your chipsets and your events <laughs> and your characters and everything to all mesh together, like I said, piecing together a puzzle. So this changes zoom and all that. If you ever have to zoom out this far just to make your map, for a fan game, um, most people actually don't like giant worlds of repeating nothingness. So if you're going to make something this big, usually if a map is like so huge that you have to zoom out this far, you might need to use it um, for maybe like buildings with rooms or something like that. But I'll explain that later because that might not make any sense. <laughs> so anyway, we'll just stay at one. This opens the database. Um, resources, this doesn't, whatever, um, play, all that stuff. So, now that we got that out of the way, let's start talking about <clears throat> chipsets and things. If you have your template, a map that you make, a new map, um, you could name it whatever, make sure it's, it selects, like, the chipset that you have. Um, dimensions, doesn't matter, wrapping, um, wrapping is when it can go endlessly in either direction. Um, you don't need to use wrapping all the time, but a lot of people like to use it it's because the camera focuses on the character as they move and some people like that, but anyway, um, parallax background, I don't have any parallax backgrounds on this folder, should I put, I should probably open up <laughs> the looking glass or something like that, but parallax background, it's exactly what it is. Um, the scrolling background image that plays separate from 
your pictures and your chipset. Um, BGM, if you do entrust, entrust to event, that means that no background music will play unless you have an event that basically activates it. Specify, it chooses something specifically, and um, it will play independently of whatever else is going on. Um, we can't <laughs> we can't highlight it, but same as parent map means when you have a map like this one and you give it a BGM specifically for something, when you make a new map under it, see how it's underneath, it's like categorized into that map. <clears throat> you can select same as parent map, which means whatever music was playing on the first map, it'll play at the exact volume and fade in and et cetera as the map that it came from, basically. None of this matters and none of this matters when you're making fan games. Um, teleport might matter if you, um, if you wanna make like an inescapable place, I guess. I'm not entirely sure, I haven't really used it. Don't trust me on this. So this is, okay. So when you make a map, you go to new map, and we already went over that. Map properties, this lets you change everything in case, oh, my map isn't as big as I thought I wanted it to be, and stuff. Um, new map areas, nobody worries about areas. Don't worry about areas. Um, copy is very nice. Delete, yeah. Shift, that means you move it. I think I could move this map. Oh, yeah, shifting is in, like, all the objects in the map, moving it left or right, one thing. Um, it's weird, I never use that. <laughs> if you want to actually move the map somewhere, you could... Well, this one is like a parent map, so I can't really move it anywhere, and there's nowhere else for me to move it. So yeah, don't worry about that. So, and this is just shows you the baby maps, I guess you could say. <laughs> and you can make maps inside maps, and make like this one a parent, and then like make this one have a map inside it. And you can do that and have it branch off all weird. But what Kikiyama, mm, maybe not so much Kikiyama, but what a lot of people do is just, um, they make one map that's like the first world and then all the maps inside it are all worlds or things connected to it. It's very basic and I'll show you in the looking glass. So since we're on this, um, we'll make a new map again. Okay, your layer one, the green, is the floors and walls of your chipset. This is water. Obviously, there's no. An this would animate water, <laughs> which is kind of hard to draw on my own. I had to sit and think for a while on how to draw it. This. Um, these all animate through one frame, but they're not water. They could be anything else. Um, these are all, these are auto tiles. So when you press the tile inside it, it looks like this, which is, I don't have a good example, but an auto tile basically makes like a wall or as you might know it, um, Marotsky's room had the little rafter tops. Like, it looks like you were, like, opened up the roof of her apartment and you looked in it and you could see, like, the tops of the walls and everything. That's what auto tile is. You can also use it for grass and dirt, which I'll show you. But I would only use auto tile sparingly when it comes to walls and creating the tops of walls just because it's more interesting to make everything piece by piece dynamically. <clears throat> anyway, so this would be your basic um, floor tile, wood, you know, and control Z quickly gets rid of it. This would be your wall. So all this is, yeah, just all that stuff. Um, I hand drew all of this. I don't know if there are any resources out that you would like for your own game that are free. So a lot of fan game makers, they make their own graphics. Everything you see here 
I spent time sitting down and pixeling all by myself to use in the game. So anyway, um, this is basically what it is. Um, that's layer one. So that's you want to focus on floors and walls, grass and dirt, and water. This right here is your... If you make... Okay, okay, notice how everything has a pink background. That means that it's transparent. So if you flood fill everything with a completely transparent tile, then the parallax background that you want will show. So keep that in mind. Anyway, let's move on to layer two, just basic layer two stuff. I'm going to delete this because I don't need it. Okay, layer two, think of layer two and everything in layer two as your object your things that you'll place inside rooms or, you know, trees, street lamps, um, boxes, displays. Um, these things are kind of a second level, but basically just things, little objects and pieces of things you want to put inside your map. And this stuff will overlay this. Notice how they just sit on top of it. It won't break up layer one's tiles, basically. If you just start putting, like, if you wanted to put something over something, <laughs> basically, if you wanted to put something hovering, I guess you could say, um, you can't do that. You click, and it's just that. And it will ruin your whole entire room and everything. Um, you can't just have, like, if I put that there, she wouldn't be able to walk behind it and everything. Actually, <laughs> okay, this is a bit advanced, but I can make it where she can walk behind these, but then it makes layering very hard. Anyway, just think of this as objects and things that you put over top of everything else. Um, these two things that I put here, these are supposed to be like windows, so she can walk behind it or things can go on behind it. And you can see it doesn't interrupt layer one's um, tiles. But that's a little bit, uh, that's a little bit up there in terms of uh, difficulty. <laughs> but that's basically it. And then layer three is your events. You right click on any point and it'll say new event, place event, etc. Um, when you want to test your game and you want to just test everything, you have to make sure you have a party starting position. That's basically where everything originates and where it can locate your character. You need to have that. It's kind of difficult um, making like an intro scene like looking glass or just a basic like loading screen like... Um, Kikiyama, but you need to place your party starting position, which is this, inside your game somewhere if you actually want to open your game and test out everything. Um, vehicle, nobody cares about vehicle. Teleport event, very quickly, if they run over this tile, they might teleport somewhere else. And it, like, you can choose where they'll teleport, which way they'll be facing, and everything like that. But... I don't use quick teleport just because there's a lot of things I need to do <laughs> whenever I have teleports. Okay, next.